Lesson 1. Edificious Software Interface and an Introduction to the Integrated MEP Design Environment. This is the Edificious Home section, part of the program's interface together with the user services layout. It's divided into three main sections. On the left, we have the file menu, including several buttons that allow us to open a new file, save our project files or export to other file formats, etc. The file menu option brings us back to the home interface window when working in the 3D or 2D modeling environments. The central window is automatically adapted and contextualized according to specific work modes, for example, when opening previously created files, or when opening examples of project files provided with the software. On the right side there are buttons for accessing some services, such as forum and the video tutorial, both dedicated to the program. Here in the center are available the indispensable videos to watch to acquire the fundamental skills to work with the program, while at the bottom there is the information and assistance section, in which forum discussions are proposed as well as some important communications such as releases of new software versions and updates. When opening a new document, the first thing that appears is the design and modeling environment. At the top, you have the multifunction interface ribbon with the file, design, tools, windows, and services options. In particular, the design section has all the necessary tools for designing and modeling in buildings in Edificious. On the left-hand side you have the navigator toolbox structured in different nodes depending on the chosen work environment for managing project data, levels and in general the project drawings together with the relevant nodes to allow access to the BIM object library. Furthermore, at the bottom left you have the different BIM modeling environments included in Edificious. These are the architectural environment, to create architectural BIM models, and the MEP systems or plants, also called the MEP environment to manage plant engineering part with special tools. On the right hand side, you have the properties toolbox, structured in various sections, different and specific to the selected entities. From here you'll be able to view and, if necessary, modify entity properties available in the various edificious environments. As you can see, the navigator toolbox is structured in various nodes. The first available node is building data where you can enter information regarding the building directly in the general data section. The BIM node shows the building level structure and with a right mouse button click on one of the level nodes you'll be able to access the Height Reference System Manager to set up your levels and sublevels. This is where you can add further levels and sublevels, set their elevation and height from the Project Reference Plane. From the Levels structure, you can access each of the relating workspaces to start modeling your floor level in a two-dimensional view. Alternatively, from the 3D view subsection you can view the entire building composed of the different levels in a three-dimensional view. In fact, the 3D view shows the entire building as a 3D object. Three-dimensional views are also available in perspective, axonometric cutaway drawings, and scene photo matches too. The next node is the Drawing Models subsection and includes the project floor plans, area plans, sections, elevations, isometric views and the CAD drawing node. The BIM Object Library node gives you access to the project, general, and user libraries. The last node of the navigator includes AA list of reports, tables, and working drawings that complete our project. To start modeling your architectural project, from a level view or in the 3D viewport, access the architectural objects menu available at the top of the interface toolbar. Here you can select various architectural parametrical BIM design objects to insert in your model. You'll find vertical and horizontal envelopes, room delimitations, ornamental walls, stairs, fillings, surface coverings and linings, etc. For each of these objects, the properties toolbox on the right helps you to manage the different parameters or specific data. You'll see that each selected object has different data, options or properties that can be customized. The 2D Graphical Objects menu is also available in the section below and offers various drawing support features allowing you to add extra details to your project drawing output and construction documents. 
The MEP Interface Edificious MEP is the BIM software for 3D modeling your project's MEP systems, mechanical, electrical and plumbing, while remaining in full integration with the architectural design. Among the different design environments available in Edificious, you'll also find a dedicated modeling environment that can be activated using the BIM Discipline selector at the bottom left-hand corner and where you have all the specific objects and tools to model the MEP systems while keeping the architectural project in context. In the MEP design environment, based on the same working methodology seen in action when dealing with architectural modeling, you also have access to an extensive range of components and accessories for MEP design too. These are the nodes that appear in the tree navigator. The MEP system data this node grants access to the MEP section where you can create the list of the technical systems present in the project. The BIM node, divided into levels and 3D views. The BIM objects library node, which groups the project, general and user libraries. The upper toolbar, where you have the drawing menu. You have the drawing group, with the dedicated MEP objects menu, subdivided into mechanical systems electrical, plumbing systems and 2D graphics. The groups related to snaps, visibility, etc. that you've probably already seen and used in the architectural environment. The MEP group contains the intelligent functions that are activated based on the selected MEP entities, including automatic gradients for pipe and duct connections, the path replicate tool, merge, connect, disconnect and the connections in error button to activate a model diagnosis check. The first section of the drawing menu shows the entities that can be used in the modeling of mechanical systems, arranged according to a matrix structure. These are grouped on the basis of the system type categories. Pressurized piping. Vent, waste, and drainage pipes. Vac air ducts. Equipment and terminals. In the pressurized pipes row, the first entity is the common pressurized pipe. Then on the same row we have the vent, waste and drainage pipes, and the air ducts shown as the first entity. The various entities are therefore contextualized according to the category of the system, which is shown in brackets for each MEP entity. Continuing with a quick overview of the various objects, we also have flexible pipes, elbow curves, T-fittings, the different types of cross-fittings and transitions fittings, the two-way junction, the three-way junction, double elbow joints plugs and accessories. Fourth row, equipment and terminals containing equipment entities, for which, unlike other objects, there's no subdivision by MEP plant categories. At the bottom, we have the different terminal objects, divided according to the system type that they belong to, in particular, hydronic terminals, aerolic terminals, direct expansion terminals, sanitary water terminals, fire safety equipment terminals, the following section is dedicated to the modeling of electrical systems and more or less has a similar layout as seen before. Pipes and flexible corrugated pipes, ducts, cable trays, accessories and switchboards, equipment and devices by type of system. Here, the various objects proceed by similar entities. On the first column, you find the pipes, for electrical distribution, ducts and cable trays, followed by corrugated flexible pipes, curves, T-fittings, cross-fittings for cable trays, transitions and plugs. From accessories and panels, you can start to insert junction boxes and inspection pits, device boxes, and other switchboard components too. Then, to finish the components overview, you'll see that there are different types of equipment and devices relating to the electrical systems, including grounding, network, and data, home automation, photovoltaic systems and multi-services, etc. Moving on we have the 2D graphics section which contains graphical illustration markup objects including points, lines, construction grids, polar lines, images, rasters, etc. and also labeling objects for the MEP system, such as MEP labels, available in the object and orientation labels group, MEP objects legend and the MEP plant legend which are found in the legends group. Furthermore, if you access the 3D view, the following additional commands for modeling MEP systems appear at the top of the interface. The automatic menu to choose the level of an MEP object in the modeling phase, automatic. The group of buttons for activating deactivating the dynamic section. 
the button for activating deactivating the horizontal sections. BIM Object Libraries The Project Library, the General Library and the User Library are shown under the BIM Objects Library node of the Navigator. Let's start from the General Library, also available online in its more extensive form. You can see that there are sections dedicated respectively to electrical and mechanical systems. For each of these, the folder organization resembles the related section in the design and drawing menu. For mechanical systems, in the first three folders, pressure pipes, waste and vent pipes and air ducts, the relative elements of the pipes, fittings and accessories type are grouped, followed by the equipment folder and a group of folders for the different terminals. The first folder contains pressurized components. In the pipes folder you can choose among the different types which are also classified according to their material composition. Then you can view a detailed sheet of library elements which show a table with all the available profiles, based on the parameters in the column. For pressurized pipes, the parameters that define the component are, thickness, external diameter, internal diameter, unit weight, capacity and mass. The first column shows the dimension, which is a combination of these parameters to define a conventional description of the model. On the right, using the I button, you can open a legend box which also shows the meaning of each of these parameters. The graphical section of the selected profile is shown at the top, and the title, description, material, and regulations are shown too. The toolbox on the right shows the model properties, referring to the type of pipe chosen, at the bottom left. Pressurized pipes present in the catalog can also be selected. The fittings folder groups all pressurized fittings, such as curves, T, Y, cross fittings, transitions, double elbow curves, two and three way junctions, and plugs and in the same sequence as the design menu. As for the pipes, the respective libraries, classified according to the material, are also available for the fittings. Tabs related to these fittings are set up following the same structure as the pipes, with all the necessary parameters that define the profile and the properties of the model. In the Accessories section, you have folders for various categories of accessories. Most of these folders are initially empty. The categories of pressure accessories in the catalog are valves, three-way valves, solenoid valves, faucets, manifolds, measurement equipment and so on. Below, in the waste and ventilation pipes, folder you'll find, pipes, fittings, and accessories relating to exhaust and ventilation systems, structured the same way as the pressurized counterparts. As part of the air ducts, ducts and fittings, these are classified not only on the basis of their material but also by type of profile, whether circular or rectangular. In the accessories folder, there are various subfolders for different categories of air accessories, such as, filters, flow regulators, control dampers and so on. For equipment, there is no distinction based on the system, as they are grouped by categories, such as combustion generators, boilers, tanks and so on. Then for last we have the terminals, divided according to the type of system. Hydronic air conditioning, direct expansion air conditioning, sanitary water, fire terminals, the electrical systems organization, in the general library, is completely similar to the mechanical systems. The first group includes a folder structure reserved for pipes, corrugated and semi-rigids and fittings. The final group is also present in the subsequent groupings, cable trays and ducts, and all are inserted in subfolders for elements like curves, T-fittings, transitions and junctions, plugs, as well as cross-fittings only in the case of cable trays. The classification is arranged according to profile type and material and for each library element you can view the related detailed sheet. For electrical pipes and corrugated pipes, the characterizing parameters are the thickness, the external diameter, the internal diameter, and the surface of the internal section. For the curves, on the other hand, the angle of curvature and the relationship between the radius of curvature and the size of the pipe are of particular importance, parameters that define the actual profile of the curved entity. In addition to the material, cable trays and ducting are also differentiated on the basis of other characteristics, or respectively by arrangement mode, and by composition, full, flush with crosspieces, or perforated. 
As seen for mechanical systems also in this case, the accessories folder and their equipment and devices by system type folder does not include accessories upstream of their configuration. However, the switches and devices folder belongs to the first of these two groups, which in turn is structured in subfolders containing elements of the domestic line, industrial line or switchboard line. In the general library, it is not possible to create, modify or delete the models in the catalog, they can be attributed to an entity being modeled and, once chosen, they are copied to the project library of the file. In the project and user libraries, the structure of the folders in the mechanical and electrical systems section is the same as described for the general library, with the difference that in both, initially all the folders are empty. Furthermore, both in the project and user library, you can create, modify or delete MEP objects that have been generated, even if they are no longer present on the drawing, or import them into other projects or PCs. In particular, the objects created in the project library are available only in the currently used file but can be copied to other files or to the user library. The objects created in the user library are always available as soon as a new project is created or a previous file is opened regardless of the file in use, as they are stored in the software installation folder. You can freely copy these elements to another user or project library. MEP System Data The Navigator provides a MEP system data node from where you can create and distinguish the different system types. This section can be accessed at any time but it's always better to define the list before starting the modeling process. You have the system ordering number, the system name, the delivery and return circuits with a color map assignment, all other parameters referring to the type of system are shown in the last column. By default, if a system isn't defined, it will be set as a default none system and assigned with a gray color and cannot be removed. The other buttons of the toolbar allow you to add copies of a selected MEP system in the list, delete unused ones, duplicate previously defined systems, and change their position in the list. Once our systems have been defined, we can move on to the modeling phase. The desired MEP entity is activated from the drawing menu and the relating properties toolbox appears on the right. For most of the entities, if activated, the first section that appears is the MEP system. From here you can assign an MEP element with the previously defined MEP system data. The first field shows the name of the system, which by default is set to automatic. If you leave this setting, the pipe will acquire the same plant definitions as assigned to the object to which it will be connected. If not connected to any object, then it will be assigned to the none category present by default in systems data. If you want to assign a pipe to one of the systems created in the list to the pipe, click on the drop-down menu corresponding to the name field, and then choose the system, for example, heating. In the event that the system has a double flow, also set it with a delivery or return flow to the pipe by clicking on the corresponding drop-down menu. Alternatively, if the system provides for a single flow, the color defined for the delivery flow will be automatically associated to the pipe. In this way, the pipeline inherits the information relating to the assigned plant system and transfers them to the entities that are connected to it. The MEP system data section can always be accessed at any time in order to add new systems, even when the overall layout has already been modeled but with the disadvantage, in this case, of carrying out a few more steps to assign the plant system at a later stage together with the relative flow to all system elements. Once a system has been assigned to a pipe or to another MEP entity, you can still modify the system data but you can only delete it from the list if it is not assigned to any components, otherwise, it can't be deleted.